Welcome back. Now we've been dealing an awful lot with Taylor series in the last couple of videos, but it's important to keep in mind that a Taylor series is a series. And when we work with series, we need to, well, two things to think about is whether or not that series will converge, and if there's any criteria for that convergence. So we found in the past couple of videos that there we can find Taylor series that converge to one function, but in this video we're going to see if that Taylor series holds true for all possible like conditions. And the way we're going to investigate this is with something called the ratio test. The ratio test. Now, I intend to do a bunch of videos on sequences and series, but just in case if I don't, let's just briefly review the ratio test. I don't want to go over it too thoroughly, but let's just, so we're all on the same page. If we have a series, let's just say an infinite series in terms of an index n, let's just say it's just a simple series a, uh, a n. Then we can see if the series converges with the ratio test. And the way that works is we're going to define one thing called rho. Occasionally you might see it as L, but it doesn't really matter the name. But is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. And we're going to take one, it's going to be the ratio of one term in our series over the term before it. And the way we're going to show that is we're going to say a to the n plus 1 over a to the n. Essentially, uh, one term and then the term that follows. So let's just do an example. Just to, uh, actually before we do that, um, this row will hopefully give us a value and from this value we can see if the series will converge. Uh, we can say that if row is less than 1, the series will converge. If row is greater than 1, it will diverge. And if row is equal to 1, then we need to use another test because this is inconclusive. And I don't really want to go into all the math of why this is now, but for now let's just apply this. So let's just use a brief example of a relatively famous series, the geometric series. The geometric series, that's just the series of, let's say, n is equal to 0 to infinity of just a constant a times x to the n. Now, that's just equal to a plus a times x plus a times x squared plus a times x cubed and so on. Now we can see if this geometric series converges with the ratio test. So let's just do it out. We're going to say that our row is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of one term, and let's say a to the x times n plus 1, sorry, raised to the n plus 1, over the term before it, which would just be a times x to the n. Now let's simplify this up a bit. The a terms will cancel. Uh, the x to the n plus 1, that's the same thing as just x to the n times x. So we can say that x to the n's will cancel. And we're left with that the limit as n approaches infinity of just x. And because there's no one term, we can just say that the limit is or we can just say that this whole thing here is just equal to x. So our row is equal to the absolute value of x, which means that this series will converge if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So here we have a criteria for converging. This series won't converge if x is equal to or greater than 1. And if you recall, hopefully this should be review. Um, although the ratio test doesn't show it, but what this series will converge to is just 1 over 1 minus x. But we've shown that it won't always converge this value depending on what our value of x is. So let's apply this ratio test now to the Taylor series expansions we found and see if they converge under any criteria or if they converge under all cases. So 
let's do our first example, e to the x, and that's just the infinite sum of just x to the n over n factorial. Now let's apply the ratio test to this. So we're going to say that rho is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, we can say the n plus 1 term, which will just be x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, all divided by the x the a to the n term, which will just be x to the n over n factorial. And we can simplify this up a bit. We can say that that's equal to the limit and approaches infinity of, we can say that this is, this is x to the n plus 1. Now, when we divide by this, we essentially multiply by, well, we can flip this around. So this x to the n, that's going to be on the denominator times x to n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Now like before, the x to the n terms will cancel and what will be left over was an x. And we can say that n plus 1 factorial, that's just n plus 1 times n times and all the other terms. So we can say x plus 1 times n factorial. So the n factorial terms will cancel. And we're overall left with limit as n approaches infinity of just x over n plus 1. Now, if x is a finite number, if x is not infinity, then when n goes to infinity, the denominator will become so large and the overall term will go to 0. So if x is a finite number, this will be 0. So our rho term is equal to 0. And we know that 0 is indeed less than 1. So what this means is that it doesn't matter what value x. As long as x is a finite number, as long as x is not infinity, then we can say that this series will converge for any finite x. So unlike the G case with the geometric series, this holds true over like any finite value x can be. Now, I want to get to sine and cosine, but it looks like I'm pushing on time, so I'll have to break this into two videos. So we'll carry on in the next part.